welcome back. We start the compositing part and when I open After Effects, what I like to do is take the effect window and make sure that it is not attached to the project panel or the media import panel, but separated for more readability. So I'm making sure that I'm in 32-bit with Alt-click. Here I'm using GPU acceleration and I'm double clicking the media import window to get my renders. Then I can click on the first frame of the sequence and After Effects will automatically recognize the frame sequences. And in this case, it's an EXR image sequence. I create a new composition called P10, which is going to be at the ratio of my rendering, 2880 by 2880. And duration is 250 frames in 25 frames per second. I can drag and drop my render. I don't see it in the viewport since it's encapsulated and you have to give it an effect called Extractor to be able to see it. Here I'm using a little add-on from Video Copilot that allows me search faster for effects by doing control space in the quick search menu. I'm going to go get the beauty pass called combined I do Control alt g or right-click Interpret Footage Main and make sure that my footage is in 25 frames second and preserves RGB is enabled. The color profile is not faithful compared to what I had in Blender, so I add the Filmic Blender effect using Control Space. This small tool also available for download on the link in the description. I select Linear Standard and now I have the same color than in Blender's viewport. I stay in quarter for a better responsiveness and now I can duplicate with Ctrl D my first layer and select the Z depth layer. I delete the filmic effect. I'm adding an exposure effect to fit my depth layer into a black and white value. I create a depth of field effect. I did Ctrl Alt Y to create an adjustment layer. I do control space again and look for fresh left depth of field. I select the Z depth and make sure it reads the layer and its masks and effects. You can see that the shot is not really responding correctly, so I'm increasing the blur amount. I leave the gamma correction checked and check inverse depth buffer. And I see that normally I have a little target that's available when we select the effect. This way I can pick my sharpen area, my focus point. I'm going to put it right in the center in a quarter quality, you can see that there are a lot of grains in my image, but when I go full quality, it will disappear gradually. In iris settings, I put 0.9 in relative border brightness and 0.1 in border thickness. I can enable the highlight selection. On top of that, I create another adjustment layer using Ctrl Alt Y and call it chromatic aberration. Add a channel mixer. I remove all other colors except red and add a CC radial fast blur. I set 2 in the amount. I set the layer to let the color blends together with the neighbor pixels. And this is with and without. I continue and I create a new adjustment layer called Vignette. I draw an ellipse that is the fill size of my layer by double-clicking the drawing tool. I switch back to quarter quality for more responsiveness. I press F on the keyboard to access quickly to the feather setting. And I set it 750. Enable inverted and add an exposure effect on this layer. Set the gamma correction to 0.8 to contrast the edges of our shot. I create another exposure FF out again. This time, it's just going to counterbalance the color correction. We will add after. You can add a Lumetri effect, and I am selecting the D21 in the drop down menu. In the exposure effect, I'm going to put 1.4 in gamma correction and minus 1 exposure, and it's going to give a little bit more of a film look to our image with a little bit more powerful contrast. I create another adjustment layer and call it diff. In it, I am adding a fastbox blur. And I set it to 35. With T, I access to its opacity parameter, and I set it to 15%. Moving on, Control alt y again to create an adjustment layer. And I call it Glow. And 
Oh yeah, the glow effect. I put 80%. Glow radius at 150 and glow intensity 0 0.1. I switch the layer to screen. And I need one more adjustment layer. I call it grain. And that's going to allow us to sharpen our image and add a little finishing grain. I add a fast box blur effect with an intensity of 1. I add an unsharpened mask behind it. Amount 20, yeah, and in the radius. I'm going to put 50 to counterbalance the diff layer we added before. I add another unsharpened mask, but this time I'm leaving the radius to 1, and I'm going to put the amount to 10. After this, I create an add grain effect and switch to final result. I'm also switching my viewport in full resolution. I set the intensity to 0.5 and the size to 0.4 to have a finer grain. And now all I have to do is duplicate the two layers that I have as input here in the media import and I'm going to duplicate it twice. The second one is going to be called P20 and the third one is going to be called P30. I do in control H on one of the three image sequences input and I replace it by the render output P20 this time. Control H on the last one available and I replace it with P30. Here, he didn't rename them to me, but it's not a big deal. I can rename them manually by pressing enter. I can replace them in the compositions. I double click on the composition. I select on the two layers that I want to replace and I hold alt and drop the layer in the composition I switch to quarter to check that it worked well. I isolating the layer on the P20 and I set again my black and white gradient for the Z depth layer. I also set the focus point that I'm interested in. For the P30 I do the exact same thing. I double click on the composition, I select the two layers, I drag the layer that I want to replace with alt held and I'm dropping it. Switch to quarter again. I set the gradient again. And I make sure the focus is placed at the right spot in the depth of field effect. To render all my shots, I select each composition with control held to add up the selection. And I press control M in the render queue. I select each output module separately. And in color, we will make sure that preserve RGB is enabled. I click OK. And I make sure to two others have the same settings. In output 2, I set the output path. I let the save and subfolder enabled. Here, I can click on comp folder and comp name and make sure that they're going to render in the same directory as well. I can click render. And that's it for the compositing part.